Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and today I'm here with a very special Wednesday Reads which is going to be the Booker Boy Book Club edition and really is featuring some books for, for the Booker Prize and also just in celebration of the upcoming Booker Prize announcement uh, which will be on July 27th. So the first thing is uh, I don't read a lot of Booker books. Uh, it is not, for whatever reason, the books are not ones that I'm typically drawn to. And I'm always looking for ways to expand and read outside my comfort zone. And the Booker Prize is one way that I can certainly do that. And uh, Kieran is a great ambassador for the Booker Prize. Uh, and he has created a Booker Boy Book Club, which had three books in it. And I decided, well, let me see what I can find at my local bookstore. And then lo and behold, they had not just one but two. Uh, today I'm only going to talk about one of them. I actually didn't plan on talking about these books but I had mentioned something on one of Kieran's videos and he asked if I was going to do uh, a review for this one. The reason why I wasn't planning on it is because this book didn't particularly work for me and that is something that I find difficult is to do a review of a book that maybe is re recommended by someone else or is really uh, a book that they really liked. So but I said I would do it, so here I am. And uh, if you hang out towards the end or after the review, I am going to do a book haul. I will put a timestamp in the description if you just wanna to jump to that, which I understand. Who doesn't wanna see a whole bunch of new books? Uh, the books that I did bring in are really Booker Prize related, so uh, yeah, hopefully you like those because I am super excited about some of them and hope to be able to read them fairly soon. We'll see. So the book that I'm gonna talk about, and I apologize, my books are over here, so I will be reaching quite a bit. The book I'm going to talk about for the review is actually The Resistance by Julian Fuchs. I think that's how you say his last name. So this is a book this, uh, about the 1970s in Argentina. It follows a particular family, a young couple, it says, involved in a struggle against the military dictatorship in 1970s Argentina must flee the country. Uh, so very brutal environment, very brutal uh, experiences that everyone uh, is going through as part of this book. You find out on the first First page that his brother is adopted and that is really a central theme kind of throughout the book and leads ultimately to what feels like the brother's um, downfall and decline. Uh, so the main character as he's telling the story uh, a couple of the things that I picked up on that I really did actually connect with, the first one was this prevailing sense of oppressive silence. And in the very first part of the book, you hear it multiple times, and I'll just read a couple of little passages if I can find them, because of course I have way too many. Um, so bruising was the silence that I remember it to this day among so many other silences that I can barely remember. And as you work your way through the book, you get a, a feeling that, or you get the, uh, you are introduced to a character who, um, whose name I can't unfortunately remember right now, who uh, basically I believe was his brother's birth mother. And it's implied that as part of what was going on in Argentina, that they were stealing babies and who knows what actually happened to the mother. And you go through the whole book wondering if he is actually one of those stolen babies or was it a legitimate adoption? And it was something that felt like it weighed really heavily on him, on his brother and on the narrator of the story and weighed them really down. Uh, the other the other part that I thought was really fascinating was this one. It says, but there are sorrows that are not susceptible to argument. There are pains not subject to exaggeration. There are stories that are not made up at the table between gulps and fork fill, forkfuls, between one chat and another. Stories that steer clear of lightness, that do not lend themselves to common ruminations to everyday words. There are events that do not live on the surface of memory and yet will not allow themselves to be forgotten, will not allow themselves to be repressed. All forgetting can fit inside a pain. That's according to a line of poetry about these uncertain things, but lines of poetry don't always get it right. Sometimes all that fits inside a pain is silence, not a silence made from the absence of words, a silence that is absence itself. 
it's where it's on chapter three it's where he's talking about he's adopted that's what i once said to a cousin so he's definitely talking about his brother it always seems like that the silence is around them uh, things that they're not allowed to talk about and his brother's adoption was definitely one of those things that i felt like was one of the taboo tub subjects uh, so another section where they talk about silence it says staying silent in order to save the other stay silent and be destroyed so based on kind of what i've said you would think that i really love this book uh because like i said there are some sections in it um that really were pretty moving and interesting and horrific stories of what actually happened in Argentina and a lot of those uh, if you look in the history I believe are definitely true um the part where this lost me and I struggled with this book is in the uh Kieran thankfully has a lovely discord um to talk about the books that are a part of the Booker Boy Book Club and in there this is asked if this is auto fiction I actually had to go look up auto fiction I wasn't familiar with that term you know, I didn't go to school for literature. I went to school for information technology, uh, if you're curious. <laughs> we didn't talk about these things in uh, coding class. Um, so in that, uh, I got very distracted by uh, what auto um, auto fiction is, what it means, how it changes the story, how it changes your perspective of the story. And for me, that was a real struggle. I couldn't figure out uh, what was real and what was not real. If you're not familiar with auto fiction, my understanding, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's basically autobiography with fiction mixed in. And so uh, the author does a very good job of writing that kind of that, that um, genre. I just don't know if this is the genre for me. Uh, I found the auto fiction components of it distracting and I, I wanted to just read the story and not try and figure out those pieces of it. And uh, I, I struggled with it after that point. What, but again, I don't know that this is a negative on the book. I think it's a negative on my reading maybe and my experience reading this particular genre. It is one that I really wanna go and read more of and see if it's the genre if it's this book that I didn't connect with as much, what the pieces were. Uh, I also found it really hard at times because the narrator was bouncing between them telling their story and telling the brother story and the family story that I couldn't always pick up on the perspective. Sometimes I felt like the brother was younger. Sometimes I felt like the brother was older. In the, if you read the blurb on the back, the brother was older. So that's really it. There wasn't anything big. It's not like I rated it one or two stars. I did give it three stars because it was very interesting. I just had trouble connecting with the genre. So Julian Fuchs, uh, resistance that is one book on the booker boy book club also if you're curious kieran does have a great review of this book as does rachel is reading if you would like to check out those i will leave those links in my description but that's the first book so now <laughs> for the book haul uh it's been uh, i think since my birth Day book haul, which is almost a month ago, uh, and I'm not going to go through every book um, that I have bought since then because that might be a lot of books, but I will go through ones that I bought either because they were part of the Booker Boy Book Club or I got them from uh, Booker long list prediction videos, either from Bob the Booker or Katie Books, uh, which is Kieran's channel, or through uh, Eric Carl Anderson. And it isn't 13 books, it's not my prediction of the Booker Prize long list, my one attempt to do that. Yeah, it didn't go well. I selected a book that wasn't even eligible to win the prize, so we're not gonna do that again until I get a little bit more experienced about Booker and Booker prizes. So, but the books that I bought, I'm super excited about and I'm super excited to share them with you. So the first one is that one of the books from the Booker Boy Book Club, which is Loop by Brenda Lozano. So this book, if you read the back of it, it says recovering from an unspecified accident, the narrator of Loop finds herself in waiting rooms of different kinds, airport departure lounges, do doctor's surgeries, and above all at home, waiting the return of her boyfriend who has traveled to Spain following the death of his mother. Loop is a love story told from the perspective of a contemporary Penelope who instead of weaving and unraveling her shroud, writes and eases her thoughts into her ideal notebook. I can read any more of the back of that, but that is sounds actually super interesting. Uh, I know I'm not gonna have time to pick this up in July. I did a count of how many pages I have on all of my commitments in July, and it's a bit excessive. <laughs> 
So I'm going to have to wait on this one. But yeah, Brenda Lozano Loop. That is one I was so super surprised to find at the bookstore because I was under the impression that I might not be able to find some of these. So yeah, that's the first one. So the next one is not a current release. It is one that is actually on my 1001 book list, but is one that I've been uh, wanting to read this author for quite a while. And just so conveniently right here on the front, um, it says winner of the Booker Prize, which is Iris Murdoch, The Sea, The Sea. And so I actually don't know much about this one. Charles Arrowby, leading light of England's theatrical set, retires from glittering London to an isolated house by the sea. He plans to write a memoir about his great love affair with Clement Macon, his mentor and mentor both professionally and personally, and to amuse himself with Lil Lizzie, an actress he has strung along for many years. Cool. So uh, Kieran, I believe, also did a recent review of this one. This is a very popular book, I believe, uh, but fits nicely in with the Booker Prize uh, ones. And even though it's not one that's eligible for this year, it is one I'm very excited to read. So the next book is one that I believe is eligible to win this year. And I have seen this on more than one list. And so that one is The Yield by Tara June Winch. Uh, so this one says, after years adrift in Europe, running from things she'd rather forget and searching for something she cannot name, Agus, August, gone to Windy, is called home from, for her grandfather's memorial. Racked with grief and burdened with all she tried to leave behind, she travels to the rural Australian town of Massacre Plains, only to find that her grandparents' house is being repossessed. Sounds very interesting, actually. I, um, like I said, definitely am interested in this one. I think it, it sounds like a very cool story. I believe it's been on like supposedly funds, uh, which is Greg's channel, um, on his top books of 2021, if I remember right. I thought I saw this one on there. But this one, yeah, The Yield by Tara June Winch. I think it did end up on Karen's final prediction list. You'll have to go watch that video, which I will also leave linked in the description below. Next one is... Um, Luster by Raven Leilani. Uh, this one, if you read the back of it, I'm not going to read the first line because I've read the first line. That's really <laughs> makes me chuckle. So Edie is stumbling through her 20s, sharing a subpar ap apartment, clocking in and out of her admin job, making a series of inappropriate sexual choices. Cool. Okay. I don't know anything more about it. I'm not going to read anything more because sometimes reading the back cover for me ruins the book. But uh, Luster by Raven Leilani. Uh, I am excited about this one. I think uh, it'll be an interesting one. I wish I had more time to read. Unfortunately, I have to do things like, you know, work. Okay. The next one I believe was on the women's prize list as well. Uh, and it is Transcendent Kingdom by Yajiasi, I believe is how you say that. And this one is Gifty is a six year PhD candidate in neuroscience at Stanford University School of Medicine, studying reward seeking behavior in mice and the neural circuits of depression and addiction. Her brother Nana was a gifted high school athlete who died of a heroin overdose after an ankle injury left him hooked on Oxycontin. Her suicidal mother is living in her bed. I'm not going to read any more because now I'm really in, I'm super interested again in this one. Um, I think this is on the short list for the women's prize as well. Uh, but this one, yeah, I'm very excited. Oh, and the sticker actually does come off on this one. It's not one of those really annoying ones that are built into the cover. So, uh, Transcendent Kingdom by Yajiasi. So, uh, the next one, I don't remember whose channel I saw it on. I think Bob the Booker might have had this one on his list, but this one is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. Uh, and this one, it says, a singular and stunning debut, debut novel about the forbidden union between two enslaved young men on a deep south plantation, the refuge they find in each other, and the betrayal that threatens their existence. I am so excited to try and read this one. I don't think it's gonna be a happy book. Um, just guessing that. But yeah, The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. So that one should be good. The next one I've seen on BookTube all over the place, without a doubt, it's been very popular for uh, Pride Month in June. It is one I haven't picked up. I did pick it up some time ago uh, just because I was interested in it. I thought I might be able to read it for Pride Month and just didn't get to it. But that one is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. So from what I understand this book is, is um, one of the characters decides to detransition in order to have a baby. And that's about the bulk of it I know about this book, but it is one that has been on a number of Booker uh, long list prediction videos. So we'll see how I like that one. And the last one, I'm intrigued by just even because of the title. I think that this um, 
I think that this is a really interesting title, uh, and it is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Cherie Jones. Uh, so I've definitely seen this, I believe, on Rachel is reading on her Discord list of books. Uh, but this one, when you read the first part of this, it says... Lala's grandmother Wilma tells the story of the one-armed sister. It is a cautionary tale about what happens to girls who disobey their mothers and go into the Baxter tunnels. And that's all I've read so far. I don't want to read anymore. But the one-armed sister, how the one-armed sister sweeps her house by Cherie Jones. And that is the conclusion of my Booker-ish book haul. Uh, like I said, I like I said, I definitely bought other books, but uh, I'm not going to talk about those today. <laughs> I have a book problem. Uh, I'm not going to consider it a problem, though, because I definitely love books. And this is one concept that I'm very excited about because I, I, like I said, I really do want to read a lot of different types of books. And these are 100% books I would not have picked up without watching other people's uh, videos on BookTube, especially about the Booker Prize. So uh, with that, everyone, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books. And uh, with that... Until next time, everyone. Thanks. Bye.